Hey there YouTube. So this is Chad Fixes All and we're out here with this 2004 Ford F-150 with a 4.6 liter. Now this uh, Ford has a bad engine in it. Uh, it's got a <laughs> sound like a rod knocking so we're gonna take a look and see what's going on. It had some oil, oil uh, pressure issues. But uh, we went ahead and pulled the motor on this already uh, to see for what we wanted to do. So let's go ahead and open up the hood here. Now you can see motor is gone. Transmission is the only thing that's left in there and uh, we successfully picked it. So you might be asking yourself then, what are we going to do? Are we going to replace the motor, rebuild the motor? And that was the question that we had. And we, when looking around, uh, this has the Windsor motor in it. So it, technically it should only have the Windsor motor go back into it. But there are also Romeos available, which gets us into the discussion of, well, can we put in a 4.6 liter uh, Romeo out of, you know, say, a Mountaineer, a Crown Victoria, or anything like that? And you know what? That's the question that we're going to answer here. So this is the Windsor motor out of the truck. Uh, we went ahead and already dissected it a little bit. And uh, we're kind of catching us midway through the process. I wanted to make sure that it's going to go well before making a video. So you're catching me midway through it. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what is wrong with this motor. So as you can see, one big indication is, well, on this side, we're missing a piston. So as again, I have mentioned that there's a, there's a rod knocking and that rod knock got a lot worse. And well, that piston's gone because when we pulled the oil pan, this is the timing chain cover, but when we pulled the oil pan off, there's all of the rods. Well, you can take a look here. We have a rod there, a rod there, wrist pin, a uh, whole bunch of bearings. Uh, yeah, actually that's part of the crankshaft right there. So the crankshaft actually busted. We had a couple of valves bent. Um, as you can see on this side, we had a valve or a rocker arm come off the valve and it, this motor was just junk. Um, the oil pan, well actually, here's a piston for you um, from that motor. The oil pan was filled with everything that you saw in that timing chain cover. So again, this motor was done. So we went out and we got a 4.6 liter uh, out of a Mercury Mountaineer, 2004. And a whole bunch of people said you can do it online, but I never saw anybody actually do it. And the steps and what might need to be changed from going from a SUV motor uh, that's not out of a truck into say a Ford F-150. So I'm making this video to actually say that you can do it. So I'm gonna go through a list of parts that are different that you'll need to change out and that you should change out in this process. Now, why am I going through and changing it out for a Romeo instead of a Windsor? This Romeo motor is a lot more available in my area and I picked one up for $90 from a salvage yard on their half off day when I had them pulled it myself. And uh, another reason is, uh, <laughs> well, again, the Windsor motor, I just couldn't find it for less than $2,000 uh, for under 150,000 miles on it. So this is going to be a lot cheaper and we're just going to do all the work ourselves. So let's go through the main things that you're going to need to change out on this. But first, let's talk about some of the main differences for this 4.6 liter out of this Mercury Mountaineer. Uh, than the F-150 Windsor motor. So first of all, this is a Romeo. The Romeo had a couple of key differences. The one key difference is, in this case, you can see that this block is aluminum, where the block on this guy is cast iron. So that was one key difference. The other, one of the other differences I've noticed is that on the block up here, there's two crank or two knock sensor uh, spots where you can put it on there. On this one, there was only one. It was right in the center. Uh, a lot of junk on there, you'll take my word for it. Uh, another key difference is the way the cam bolts in. So this has like a cam plate on it where the Windsor had separate ones, not connected. 
And one of the other things that were different, at least when I was uh, Googling, is that they said, uh, make sure you use your own timing, the correct timing chain for the actual vehicle. Don't do it based upon the uh, what you're putting the vehicle into, but from the, what you got the vehicle out of. So I, I bought a timing chain for this uh, new motor over here, and it's gonna be for the Romeo um, timing chain, not the Windsor even though we're putting into a truck that had the Windsor motor. And then the other, the last key difference is the fact that this Windsor motor had an eight volt crankshaft, where the Romeo over here the Romeo had a six bolt. And you see I took the flywheel off already. So the oil pan from the Mountaineer was different. The oil pan from the Mountaineer is like a two-step oil pan where this oil pan is just a one-step, so one step down. So you can see right here, we went ahead and changed the oil pan out and we also put a new gasket on there. The oil pickup was a little different too, so we took the oil pick off after cleaning out all the metal shavings and everything like that. Took the oil pickup off of the uh, for a truck and we put it onto this Romeo motor. On the side here, the, let's move this flex pretty cover. On the side here, the exhaust manifolds were different, so we're gonna use the truck manifolds. Also going to use the truck motor mounts. Um, it's about it, we're gonna use the motor, I already checked the starter off the truck should work over there on the starter section there. So uh, if we don't, if it doesn't work, we'll have to address that when we come down to it. Another key difference that I didn't mention earlier is that these valve covers here, I think it's 11 bolt on the Romeo where the uh, Windsor had a 13 bolt. Now we're just gonna use the valve covers from the Mountaineer. The oil filler tube is going to fit perfectly where we need it to. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and use the Romeo valve covers. And they're also the same depth and height and everything like that, so they'll fit just fine. Again, as I mentioned, the flywheel is different. So we're going to put a new flywheel on it from Rock Auto instead of just trying to find one from the salvage yard. We're just going to, we just bought one. Uh, that's pretty much it on the back. Oh, use your truck uh, flex plate uh, cover or the bell housing uh, separator. This is the one off the truck right there. So we're going to use that one. And then over on the driver's side, Again, use the motor mount off the truck. Gonna use the exhaust manifold off the truck. We took the truck dipstick, and then we also swapped out the uh, oil adapter. So this is the truck's oil filter adapter, and also where the hose comes out for the, uh, I think that's the lower radiator hose. So we also took that guy right there too. That's pretty much it on the back, and then uh, on the front, uh, the last thing that we want to talk about on the front is the timing chain cover. We're going to use the timing chain cover off the truck because we want to make sure all the accessories bolt up correctly. Um, looking at the top of the engine, we took the uh, heater core uh, hose line right there and we put it uh, from the truck onto the Romeo motor. We also did the knock sensor from the truck since it only had one. Hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. and then. For the intake, we're gonna use the uh, truck intake as well. So let's take a look, see all the parts that we bought from Rock Auto here. So this is the majority of parts that we bought from Rock Auto. So as I mentioned, I got the flywheel for a Ford F-150 that would fit on a six bolt uh, crankshaft. Since F-150s did come with a six bolt crankshaft, they could come with the Romeo Motors. Uh, ours just happened to come with the Windsor. Got a new timing set for a Romeo motor, a new oil pressure gauge or switch, so that way we actually can monitor it now. Uh, this is gaskets for the timing chain cover. Uh, we got valve cover gaskets, we got new intake uh, gaskets. This is a new thermostat. I only got five of my eight spark plugs right now. We went with the NGK's uh, iridiums. Got a new water pump, new oil filter, these are exhaust gaskets right there, and then we got new exhaust bolts. Uh, the exhaust bolts on both of the vehicles were, or both of the engines were snapped 
uh, probably about, I would say, uh, three out of the 18 were snapped. So this is what we're gonna be putting on to the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through each one of these steps of putting this on, but it's gonna go in really fast forward. And uh, if you want a slowed down version of it, I might post a uh, uh, how-to on each one of these uh, installs for this 4.6. You can find that in the description. Also make sure to uh, put a comment into the uh, comment section and uh, let me know if you did any swaps on your 4.6 or what you've done to your 4.6 in your Ford truck or Mustang. Uh, and also make sure to like and subscribe to my video and my channel. So last time we looked at this, it was the valve covers were off, but valve covers are back in now and motors in the uh, truck. So what we're going to do now is button up the top end and uh, throw everything back on it. The next time you'll see it, the engine will be complete, hood back on, and we'll be about ready to start it up for the first time. So we'll check back then. All right, so we went ahead and buttoned up the rest of the motor. Uh, threw all the accessories on and hooked all the wires, the coolant lines, everything's up. Everything went together perfectly as it should have. Uh, nothing missing, nothing uh, out of place. So let's go ahead and try to fire it up for the first time. There we go. So you can see down there, that's the aluminum block. Uh, so we went ahead and replaced Windsor motor with a Romeo. So that just shows you right there that you can do it. And uh, it's definitely possible for a lot cheaper. I think we spent total on this whole build about $500. And uh, the shop wanted $1,500 just for labor to put it in and out. And another $15 to $2,000 just for the motor. So that just shows you that you can do it a lot cheaper. Just uh, go ahead and make a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, check out my other videos for more.